Welcome back. Now, after years of financial turbulence, the Namibia Wildlife Resorts has recorded a historic record profit. Now, last year, October, the state-owned enterprise also announced that it has cleared all of its debt and started a debt-free era. To discuss how the NWR achieved all of these and the future of the company, I'm now joined by NWR Managing Director, Dr. Matthias Nguamma. A very good evening to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us on Business Today. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to provide information to the public and some clarifications. Now, Doctor, the NWR has uh, received or has achieved significant milestones with this um, historic uh, record profit. Can you perhaps break it down for us a bit and just elaborate and let us know what exactly what that means and what that looks like and also the contributory factors to that? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, yeah, I want to publicly confirm that uh, we have just finalized our annual report for the financial year ending the 1st of October 2023. So this financial report, like the governance processes requires, we have to table it to the shareholder and it has to be approved there. So it is really true that uh, during that year we have recorded a profit, a net profit of uh, 46 million. Uh, which basically that, uh, yeah, to break it down, our revenue uh, has grown from the previous year. It has grown by 32%. And uh, also our expenses, we were able to reduce a little bit our expenses or, or manage the expenses. Right. We, it, it was only able to increase by 7%. So that combination, a growth in the revenue mm -hmm. and managing of expenses to that level, I say it, this resulted then in a, a net profit of 46 million. Doctor, let's look at quickly, uh, just give us a breakdown of where most of NWR's profits or income uh, came from. Are we looking at, was it mostly due to international or yeah, international tourists or was it domestic travel? What were the, what was the breakdown there? Yeah, so any tourism company, really the uh, revenue comes from your accommodation revenue, which is basically the bookings which the, the clients made. And this booking is also spread further into international market as well as the domestic market. Uh, in our case, uh, like most tourism companies, the, the, the international leg still uh, dominates. Yeah. We have a ratio like 70% uh, international and 30% domestic however i must say that the domestic is really growing as well yeah. so that is the accommodation revenue the next major revenue is really your your, your food and beverage you know the, the restaurant uh, oh. what people uh, buy in the re restaurants and so on that is also a major revenue and the third other major revenue is your activities you know when people come to the resorts they have to do game drives and other activities. So really those three components, that is where uh, most of the revenue comes from. On top of the, um, on top of the profits, you also receive the quote unquote clean bill of health from the auditors uh, for two consecutive years, doctor. Uh, take us a bit or take us through how you manage this effective governance and uh, statutory compliance uh, matters. The statutory compliance in terms of uh, commercial public enterprises is really outlined in the Public Enterprise Governance Act. It says there what you must do in terms of your governance, what, what, what reports, what documents must you have in place. Mm -hmm. And one of these documents is that after the end of your financial year, like in our case, six months after the end of the financial year, you must be able to produce an annual report as well as you must be able to produce audited financial statements. So this is what government requires. Mm -hmm. So these are the governance in place. We have to adhere to. Uh, the companies really, we have decided that we have to be very, very strong on compliance to statutory uh, requirement. <clears throat> That's why you see also we'll touch to that the issue of settling the uh, taxes and right. things like that, which was a problem in the past. We have committed that we have to adhere to that because that is what governance requires. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we compiled, we developed this annual report, like I said, which we then tabled to the shareholder and uh, it was discussed and it was adopted. It was approved 
and now it becomes a public document. By the way, this uh, annual report is available on our website. Uh, if people want more information, like you're asking me break down where right. the revenue come from, it is available on our website. The public can further go there and try to see. Uh, what, and scrutinize what? it at their, at their leisure, as it were. Yes. Doctor, you, you, the tourism sector in Namibia is, is also characterized as a very competitive sector. Um, I mean, we, 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 the, the, the contribution of, of tourism to, the, to GDP and to the Namibian economy can never be discounted. It's one of the biggest contributors. Uh, and yet again, NWR does operate in that particular environment. Talk to us a bit about how you are managing, uh, you know, operating in such a highly competitive sector and, and how you're navigating and moving around to be able to attract both international and, of course, encouraging domestic travel or domestic tourism. Yeah, it is true. It's really a competitive environment. Uh, what we mean with a competitive environment is there are very, there are a lot of players in there. Mm. For example, here in Windhoek, how many hotels are here? If you are not happy at this place, you go to the other place. The same also with the resorts. There are also a lot of resorts, uh, basically at the prime spots, surrounded at the, those prime spots. So if a client is not happy with NWR, the, the, they can go to another place. That is what right. we mean with highly competitive, right. because there are many uh, other companies competing in there. So uh, as you know, to be able to survive in a competitive environment, you have really to up your game. That there is no other way to about it. Uh, in terms of uh, service standards, customer service, mm. uh, those type of things. Uh, that is why we say, we are saying mm. our revenue grew. That means they are customers who trust us, who rely on what we do. Right. They believe in what we do and they come to us. That is how our occupancy is growing. Uh, by the way, our occupancy, the financial year was 42%. Right. It's also a steep increase from the previous year. Right. So it's really to do with uh, what you offer to the customers. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that everything is fine, but you have to continuously learn and improve to reach a certain standard, because that is how you maintain your customers. Doctor, you preempted my next question, because I mean, uh, I, I, and, and this is not really a secret that NWR has been faced with, uh, and I'm so sorry to put you on the spot here, but uh, you know, a, a few years ago, a lot of people have been complaining about the service delivery and the quality of service from the respective resorts and, 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 and your, your, your you know, accommodation places. And just looking at some of the challenges that are, have been faced as an organization, but most importantly, as you know, uh, looking at, 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 at the resorts, in addition to, to, to the challenge that you just highlighted now, you know, being a very competitive and being a very uh, highly uh, competitive market, what are the challenges as the NWR faced and how have you mitigated those challenges in really trying to put your best foot forward? I mean, like you mentioned earlier on, the numbers are speaking for themselves. Yeah. However, you know, the experience is still the experience at the end of the day. Yeah, I have just to say that maybe um, even the challenges we are talking about, like financial challenges, profitability, the company is in existence for 25 years. Out of these 25 years, it's only two years, which is 2019 and 2023, we have been profitable. Mm. So even the financial challenges was a serious challenge. Even the issue of debt was a serious challenge. But we have committed ourselves that uh, even though the challenge is very big, we are committing that we will step by step try to resolve these challenges. At least we can say we kind of like resolve the financial challenge and also the issue of uh, cash flow or debt and right. things like that. It's very, very important that financially you need to be sustainable to be able to do a lot of other things you want to do, like repairs. Mm. You can't do repairs if you, your finances are not right. right. Customer training. You can't train if you're, uh, you don't have the money to do so. Uh, that is why in the past, because of this lack of profits, the, the loss-making state, it's difficult to have to, for, for the company to have done certain things. Now that the financial situation is improving, it puts us in a position to improve, to be able to deliver the service which is required. For example, uh, we, in our annual report, we have said that uh, we have spent uh, the financial year 2023, 27 million on repairs. The previous year, it was 22 million. If you add this, within two years, we spent almost 50 million just on repairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of those interventions, this improves the service delivery somewhat. 
Also, we have engaged, like we said before, we have engaged with the uh, NAST in terms of to help us with the customer service training, which is a continuous project. All those interventions is really to address and respond to this issue of customer service, almost like how we responded to the financial challenges. The challenges in a, any company, whether a private sector or public company, there is no company which says they don't have challenges. Uh, challenges are there. For example, in our case, the issue of uh, old infrastructure is one. Uh, most of the results we have is really not uh, for the purpose of a resort. Remember, NWR is coming from a historical point of view. We have some results uh, which we have, but it's really not for the purpose of a resort. And this is what I mean with uh, all the infrastructure. We have to continuously uh, improve that and renovate and maintain and so on. The issue also, the continuous also, the issue of staff training is also a challenge. Right. You know, in the tourism tour industry, you have to continuously train. What you knew yesterday is, is not relevant today. So the issue of training is also an issue. And then the issue also of enhancing our uh, capacity or right. human resource capacity is also another challenge which we have to al always respond to. Doctor, you, you mentioned that in the last two years uh, you've spent in excess or around 50 million a million dollars on infrastructure. Uh, I mean, again, infrastructure has been one of the uh, points of contention or, or concern for, for many visitors, especially your local visitors that do go to your, uh, to your facilities. Uh, firstly, okay, so we spent 50 million dollars. What is the current status of, of, of the infrastructure? But most importantly, are you satisfied with the current status? Or is there, what does the plan, you know, moving forward, what does that, what does that look like? Yeah, I, I can't say that I'm satisfied. Uh, uh, it's, it's a continuous process. As you know, the, the, the maintenance have to continue. You have to always renovate. You know, we have structures like thatched roof, for example. Uh, after a certain period, you have to uh, put up a new uh, thatch and so on. So it is a continuous process. I can't say I'm happy this is it but we are continuously uh, responding to that. Mm. I just wanted to say that uh, maybe this thing of self-introspection, if you ask me what are the some factors which contributed to where we are, is this issue of self-introspection, because really there was internal uh, self-introspection to say, out of the 25 years, uh, it's only at that point we didn't uh, record a profit. Is this really a healthy state? Mm. You know, there was a lot of positive energy, people from the shareholder asking this question, from the board asking this question to the management. Even on an individual level, you don't feel good. I mean, <laughs> therefore, because of this introspection and the positive energy, that led to say, to commit and say, no, we can't let this go on like this. We have to do something. And this is the result, what we are seeing like in 2019, a profit and then also in 2023 a profit because of this lack of um, not being satisfied right. where we are, where we, we want to continuously uh, improve. When I look at it the other day, uh, to give an analogy of a soccer team is really uh, fitting in this case. Because if you are a big team, you know this big team, Manchester... Please don't say Manchester United, <laughs> so you're going to break my heart. <laughs> Manchester United, Barcelona, if they are not winning titles... Right. There is positive uh, energy there where the owners and the board and so on are asking, is this really what we must be? And as management, we have to respond to those questions. We, we can't ignore them. We have to respond to them. And fortunately, it is now resulting in what we are seeing, like uh, the, the, the profit. But the journey still continues because it doesn't stop. Last year, you announced that the NWR um, is debt-free. Um, give us an update on that and on, on, on the debt-free status or error. Mm -hmm. And has that changed since the announcement? Yeah. I have to confirm, uh, because I had some members of the public asking, no, this cannot be true. Is it really true? Right. It is in the financial statement. Uh, it is in the financial statement now. When you look at the issue of long-term liabilities, the loan we have, and the issue of current liabilities, you will see there at long-term liabilities, a zero is nothing. 
So that's what we mean with a debt-free, long-term debt-free. So it's the a definition of the debt um, that, 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 that was announced. Yes, okay. yes. So I can confirm we are still long-term debt-free. We, we, we settled all the debts, as well as some of the uh, short-term uh, debt, you know, like um, uh, tax obligations and so on. So I even in terms of the balance sheet, our balance sheet really improved because of that uh, move. You know, if you remove a loss or a, a debt of 75 million from your liability, Obviously, it improved your overall balance sheet. Right. That is what we meant with even our balance sheet improve because of those steps we take. But it is true uh, in terms of that state that we announced, we are still long-term debt-free. Or even our current uh, liabilities, we are managing that. We, re we reduce it. That in the, with the net result that it is affecting the balance sheet we have is looking very good, is positive. This week, the NWR and NAPW signed a salary increment for your staff. What prompted the company to come to this decision and who exactly qualifies for the salary increment? Yeah, uh, th those are also one of those um, initiatives we have to do. Like I told you, issues of uh, renovation, issues of customer training. We have also to look at our staff because the staff is one of the biggest resource we have. And uh, it is just what led to that, it's just a realization that uh, it is a norm that every now and then you need to benchmark yourself to the market because we said we are in a highly competitive market. Right. We have to look at our competitors how are their market remuneration structure like? Mm. And these things are normally done through benchmark survey, where you look at your remuneration structure compared to the others. And, uh, and we've done that exercise, and um, basically it revealed that uh, in some positions, we really lag behind the market. It's not difficult to understand because the company from the previous year, there was an issue, there was a financial issue that the company was a loss-making state and you could not do what they wanted to do. And therefore, we saw that uh, we lagged behind the market and we needed to rectify that. Right. And some, uh, basically, we use a Peterson grading system, employees from A1, basically to D3, they were employees, basically the majority of the employees, mm -hmm. I can say maybe 80% uh, uh, of the employees were identified that they are behind the market and we needed, we rectified it with effect from 1st of October 2023. We align it to the market. Right. We align our salary structure to the market. And when I say to the market, basically to the minimum of the market, because you get minimum scale, mid scale, and high level scales. Right. In our case, we align <clears throat> ourselves to the minimum. Doctor, we are running out of time, but something that I really did want to, uh, to get to you was your strategic plan for the next five years, next 10 years, what does that look like uh, from your looking at your, from a short term, medium term, medium term and long term, looking at your resorts, the maintenance thereof, your camps, improving customer service. And I know that you've been touching a lot on that because I think it's, 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 it's a very big uh, point for you, but also looking at domestic tourism and how the NWR is looking at encouraging more Namibians uh, to traveling and to seeing the country through the conduit of the NWR? Yeah, in terms of our strategic plan, uh, I'm happy to say that some of those long-standing challenges in our strategic plan, like the financial issue, we are coming close to resolving that. Right. However, in the strategic plan, there remain still issues of organizational effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, whether it's in terms of the cost efficiency, whether it's in terms of uh, staff efficiency, that is still a strategic objective which we are working on to get it right. Because if we get that right, even the issues of customer service, that is where it gets resolved. Your, your, how efficient you are in terms of how you are delivering your, your, your service. The other thing in terms of our strategy is that uh, we have some resorts which can qualify to be what we call a premier resort or a, a high-end market resort. We want them to uplift them to that standard of a high-end resort. Because doing that, uh, we believe that it will be able to generate uh, more returns for us than currently is. A uh, few, some of those resorts, uh, that is one of the strategic plans. As well as uh, adding few revenue streams. We currently manage 24 resorts. Uh, it has been that for a while. 
and we are looking at also exploring adding few one or two more resorts to our portfolio that is also uh, the strategic intent uh, in our strategic plan on a domestic tourism perspective Do domestic tourism mm. domestic tourism uh, maybe the information doesn't go out to the public uh, we, uh, we acknowledge we need to do more about that but there is still incentives right. available to the domestic tourism for example like we always say if uh, domestic uh, tourists, they have to buy a NAM leisure card. If you buy that card, it entitles you to 50% discount on those things I said, uh, accommodation and, and those type of things. So that really brings the price uh, of a, our price a little bit down if you get the 50%. So that is available to the domestic tourism. Uh, also, the issue of 25% uh, discount to pensioners, for example, mm. sometimes it's not well known. If you are a pensioner above 60, the moment you book and you are above 60, automatically you qualify to a 25% discount. Also, SADEC uh, also did qualify for 25% discount. In addition to that, also the issue of also the, uh, the specific, um, we have a, a tour planning division. Right. For if the domestic uh, people want to travel to a certain place, they can come to us, we can work out a package for them with probably a package which fits their pocket or something like that. So we encourage also the public to contact our booking department, marketing <coughs> department, that we can be able to structure a package for them to be able to afford to travel to a specific resort. Doctor, this is a conversation that I can sit down and have with you all evening, but uh, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for taking time out on being with us on business today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. That was uh, Namibia Wildlife Resorts Managing Director, Dr. Matthias Ngangwama, who take, uh, taking to us, or rather talking to us, uh, or taking us through how the state-owned enterprise managed to achieve a historic record profit seven months after the company announced that it has cleared all of its debts in October last year. Business Today continues in a moment. We'll be right back.